action figure enthusiasts out there, JC here with another TNI news video. Now we've got a lot to cover today, so let's hop right into it. And first thing I want to talk with you guys about is the debut of the new Venom trailer from Sony Pictures this morning. This is the second full trailer that we've seen for this movie. The movie which stars Tom Hardy will hit theaters on October 5th. And overall from this new trailer, I, I like the special effects. I think they're doing a pretty good job with the CGI and how Venom is portrayed. He definitely looks like he's very big. He does not have the spider symbol on his chest, at least from what we're seeing here, which makes sense because it doesn't look like this version of Venom is going to have any real connection with Peter Parker and Spider-Man, at least not at this stage which, you know, is one of the things that I kind of make is, makes it hard for me to get excited for this movie with. I grew up on the original origin of Eddie Brock, where the symbiote first merged with Spider-Man or Peter Parker during the Secret Wars, and then uh, Peter ends up rejecting the symbiote, which then goes off and finds Eddie, who also has a grudge against Peter for costing him the job at the newspaper, and the two basically form a partnership and try and get revenge on Spider-Man. So without that origin story, to me, it just doesn't seem very valuable. Venom like I know Venom has been portrayed differently over the years and you know I think there's a different origin with the ultimate version of Venom which maybe is what this movie is going to borrow from but again for me not having that Spider-Man connection is definitely a real bummer but I'd love to hear your thoughts what do you think about the movie what did you think about the trailer looks like he's going to be fighting the character known as Riot who's part of the those symbiotes from the Life Foundation uh, we also get, looks like a glimpse at a female symbiote. Originally, I thought Riot was going to be Carnage with the axe hands, even though he wasn't red. But I do believe the main bad guy in this movie is going to be Riot. Also, as far as Carnage goes, I'm sure there'll be some hints and lead-ins lead for Carnage. But my guess is we're probably not going to see him. I also feel like this movie is heading for an R rating. Um, looks like they're definitely trying to make it dark and a bit scary. Um, I would imagine we're probably going to see a bit of gore, things like people getting their heads cut off and stuff like that. So I would not be surprised at all if this movie ends up with an R rating. But I'd love to hear your thoughts. You know, what did you think of the new trailer? Are you excited for the movie? Let me know in the comment section down below. Now, while we're on the subject of Venom, I also wanted to share some news from this weekend that came out from the Wonderfest Summer Convention. That's an overseas convention where we got a look at a few new Mafex figures from Mediacom Toys. So they are doing a Venom figure for the comic. This is a comic book version of Venom. And overall, you know, based on these images that we're seeing, I can't say I'm terribly excited for it. He looks a little bit on the scrawny side. The head sculpt looks good, but I think he just looks, in my opinion, he looks too scrawny for Venom. But, you know, when we see more, I don't have a lot of details. I don't know exactly what kind of accessories and stuff he'll be coming with. So, you know, maybe when we see some more information and details, images and stuff for this figure, I'll be more excited for it. But beyond that, beyond Venom, they're also doing a Deadpool comic book base figure and a new, a second Gwenpool figure. So this version of Gwenpool, I'm not terribly familiar with, with the black and the pink eyes and everything. But if you're a Gwenpool fan, you'll probably want to check that one out. We also got some new looks at the comic book based Spider-Man figure, which I am definitely excited for, as well as their Avengers Infinity War version of the Iron Spider. Looks like that's the only Avengers Infinity War figure they're doing for the Mafex line, but I definitely think it looks good. Probably the best Iron Spider, at least official one, that we're getting from any company up until this point, except maybe Hot Toys, which, um, you know, it's a 12-inch figure, so I don't really count that. Now, other reveals out of the Wonderfest convention this weekend include a new Figma Batman Ninja animated movie Catwoman figure from Good Smile Company. So they're the first ones to do uh, Catwoman from the movie. A number of companies are doing the Joker and Batman, including Good Smile. Also, Tomasi Nations is doing a version of Batman and the Joker. Uh, Tomasi Nations is also doing the henchmen, one of Joker's henchmen. And then even Mattel is doing uh, six-inch versions of Batman and Joker for their multiverse line, which we saw uh, the other week at San Diego Comic-Con. Now, Mediacom also had a number of figures on hand that were non-Marvel related. Now, pretty much all of these we'd seen before, including the new Aquaman movie figure, with Aquaman, we had seen this figure debut at the San Diego Comic Convention. They did not have any other figures for the Aquaman movie. I don't know specifically if they'll be doing any others. I would imagine they would probably do Black Manta, maybe Mira, but at this point, all we know of is the Aquaman figure. 
They also had on hand some new Robocop figures, which again we had seen before, but Robocop from the second movie and the third movie with the jetpack. And then they're doing Kingsman figures. We'd seen those before, an alien figure. They're doing John Wick. A number of companies are doing figures based on John Wick, the Keanu Reeves character. I don't know why he's become so popular, but we're getting uh, this uh, Mafex version. And then we're getting uh, Mezco's doing a 112 Collective version. Diamond Select Toys is doing a 7-inch version for their Select line. And even Hot Toys is getting in on the action with a 12-inch version. And then other figures that Mediacom had on hand at the Wonderfest convention include Astro Boy and uh, the figure from Clockwork Orange and uh, several Justice League movie figures, which again, we had seen before. And then Kiato debuted two new figures for their amazing Yamaguchi Revel Tech line, one for the Marvel series and one for the DC. So for DC, this is the second figure coming after the Batman figure and it's Deathstroke the Terminator. And overall, I think this is the cooler of the two reveals. I, I like the way it looks. Uh, it's got an unmasked Slade Wilson head. He's gonna have his machine gun and swords and everything. So that one I'm kind of hyped for. The second figure for the Marvel line is Psylocke, which doesn't look bad, but it doesn't look, you know, we just got the Marvel Legend version, so I, I can't say I'm super excited for Psylocke. But, but definitely, I'm digging that Deathstroke. Now, I don't have a lot of detail on these figures. I don't have release dates or anything like that. But, but again, these were on hand at the Wonderfest convention. And these images come from Mr. Yamaguchi himself, who posted them on his own Twitter account. Okay, now switching back to entertainment news, I wanted to let you guys know that the third season, the lineup for the third season of the docuseries that airs on Netflix called The Toys That Made Us was announced. This was actually announced back during San Diego Comic-Con. And originally, this is now being dubbed officially season three. Originally, the first season, they had just broken up into two parts, but now they're calling that season one and season two. Both of those are available on Netflix now. And then the third season, which I don't have an actual air date for, I believe it's probably going to hit at the end of the year around December timeframe, like the first season did. But the lineup for the third season is going to focus on Power Rangers, wrestling figures, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and My Little Pony. So if you're a fan of those toy lines, you'll probably want to check out the, the, the series. Again, it focuses on these older retro toys. It does more about their origins and, and the vintage days. It focuses more on that than as opposed to their modern releases. It does touch upon that stuff. But, you know, the main focus of the show is, you know, when these these classic lines hit back in the 80s and 90s and such. So, again, if you want to check that out, that'll be airing on Netflix probably towards the end of the year. On the Star Wars news front, the official cast announcement for Episode 9 was announced this week. The movie is going to start production here. And uh, I'm not going to go over the entire cast uh, list, but the uh, two points I wanted to touch upon are that A, Mark Hamill will be returning, not that that's a huge surprise, I'm sure he'll be returning in spirit form. And then also Carrie Fisher is going to be in the movie, and it's said that they're gonna be using unused footage from The Last Jedi in this movie. I don't know exactly how that's going to work. Uh, my feeling was with this movie that they're probably going to jump ahead in time when uh, and basically have it where, where Princess Leia is no longer alive. But again, I don't know for sure how they're going to work that. But she is going to actually be in the credits and everything and will be making an appearance in the movie. Now, while we're on the subject of Star Wars, even though not entirely Star Wars toy related, I wanted to let you guys know about a new Kickstarter that was launched by the company known as Ready Sets. Now, first of all, I just want to let you know that Ready Sets is a sponsor to the websites, but this is actually a product that they're doing that I think is pretty cool. They do these uh, foldable 3D diorama sets. They're actually made of cardboard, but they are fairly sturdy. I did a spotlight video uh, months ago on their first set, which is uh, based on a city or an urban city. But the second one that they're doing, which they've launched a Kickstarter for, is based on like a space station type setting. Uh, they call it the, the space space play set. So I think this, these sets are cool, not only for the adult collector who likes to take photography of their action figures, because it does make for a nice backdrop, but I also think it, it's cool for the younger kids because these are truly like 3D type play sets. Again, they are made out of cardboard, but they are very sturdy. 
and they are very big. Uh, they, you know, when they're fully assembled, they take a lot of room. But the thing I really like about these is to put them together, all it is is you basically just pull it up and slide a few pieces in, and then voila, it's put together. And then when you want to put it away, you just fold it down. It, it, it basically folds up, and then you can uh, easily store it so it doesn't take up a lot of room. So that's really the thing I like most about these. You know, there's other companies that do similar type deals, and even places like NECA toys are starting to do these plastic ones but with those with the plastic ones you know they take up a lot of room and it's not like you can just fold them up and put them away so that's where I think the advantage with these are but they are launching a Kickstarter for their second set which again is called the space base play set they are trying to collect about I believe 30,000 is their goal and they've got 24 days to go at the, of this filming I'll put a link to their Kickstarter if you want to check it out and get more details but again, if you want something for the kids or you want something, you know, to use with your toy photography, I think the, the set is worth checking out. Okay, and turning back to Marvel, I just wanted to let you guys know that today is the first day where you can get Avengers Infinity War on digital download. So places like Apple's iTunes and such like that. It is not yet available on Blu-ray, but will be in the next week or so. But if you want to download it and watch it, I already did this morning. I've already watched the movie once today and probably will watch it again later on. But it is available on digital download. And speaking of Marvel movies, I also wanted to let you guys know that the other day, the merger deal between Fox and Disney got the approval from both the Fox and Disney shareholders. That was one of the major uh, hurdles left to overcome for this deal to go through. The deal is expected to get approval from the Justice Department and, you know, with the federal government. So it does not look like it's going to be held up on that end. So basically at this point, it looks like uh, everything is pretty much a done deal uh, with, with the merger between the two companies, which includes obviously uh, for our intents and purposes here in this video is the rights of the X-Men and Fantastic Four going back to Marvel Studios. Now, no word on when or if, well, more of when, we'll start seeing those characters and be incorporated into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I've been hearing rumors, but nothing official, of things like the new X-Men movie, the Dark Phoenix movie, has been scrapped, which, if it's true, I think is a good idea. I think it would be best to scrap pretty much every one of the 20th Century Fox Marvel movies and essentially start fresh. I don't mind if they incorporate the actors from those movies into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And obviously, Deadpool is kind of the exception. You can do a Deadpool and not really have a conflict with, with the current Marvel Cinematic Universe universe though I would like to see Deadpool actually incorporated into movies like the Avengers and stuff I think that would be pretty cool but again the deal looks like is going to go through um, when when we'll actually see effects from that and when the, everything will be finalized I don't have those specific details but if you thought you know Comcast had tried to throw a wrench into things uh, making a deal of their own but that ended up getting rejected and so like I said it looks like the deal between Fox and Disney is going to be going through I'd love Love to hear your thoughts there's a lot of debate that goes on on whether this overall is a good thing for the movie industry i know marvel fans are excited because those characters like x-men and fantastic four will be going back to the marvel cinematic universe but then there's the whole thing about monopolies and you know whether quality will go down because there won't be much competition and things like that so i'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments section below do you think the merger is a good thing or not for the overall movie industry and for marvel movies in its own right now, the final thing I wanted to talk with you guys about, and I was a little hesitant to actually talk about this, but it's been on my mind, so I wanted to go on and do so. And that is uh, the other week during San Diego Comic-Con, it was announced that director James Gunn, who directed both the Guardians of the Galaxy 1 and 2 movies and was working on the third one, has been fired by Disney for some old tweets that he did. And there's been a lot of debate online. Uh, just this week, the cast from Guardians of the Galaxy released an open letter where they basically showed their support for James Gunn. And Chris Pratt, who plays Star-Lord in the Guardians movies, even has gone on Twitter to say that he hopes that Disney does rehire the director. 
Now, my a personal opinion on this, and there's a lot of debate about, you know, whether it's something that somebody said years ago, these were tweets from like seven to 10 years ago that he did, that it got him fired. And the reason why somebody dug these up was for political reasons, which I'm not really going to go into. But to me, that's really immaterial um, because I feel like my personal opinion, if you go, and I'm not even going to... Uh, put the tweets here on this video. Um, if you do a Google search, you should be able to find them pretty easily. But there's a lot of uh, things with like uh, pedophilia and stuff, which he claims that he was just trying to be edgy and these were jokes and stuff. And, you know, he was trying to be like a shock jock type deal and, and, and things like that. And he's a totally changed person and he's not that person and all that stuff. And I hope that is the case. But if you read these tweets, it's really hard to accept that these were just jokes. Um, if, if at any point in his life he thought these were, were funny or or something that should be uh, said publicly, I, it just makes me question, you know, that this is somebody that I want in charge of movies that are made for kids. Um, I can forgive a lot and the political issues, you know, he, he's very anti-Trump. And that, again, that's why some conservatives dug up these old tweets and made them, you know, basically brought them into the limelight. But the tweets themselves, I just feel like even if they were done 10 years ago, it, it makes it very hard for me to want to see him return to a Marvel-based movie that is geared for kids. I'm not saying that he's a pedophile, but again, if, if you're willing to make public comments like that, it just makes me question and makes me hard to trust that there isn't something more than just being trying to be edgy. Um, I think, you know, as a public figure, you've got to be careful what you say, and there are definitely repercussions um, when you say stuff like that. And so I support Disney in firing him and hope that they do not bring him back. I wouldn't be surprised if they do, but, but again, for me personally, I, I am happy with the decision that they let him go. My only thing about this is I am, I find it hard to believe that Disney did not do their own research on this when they first hired him and were not aware of that. I, I don't think there's anything concrete that says that Disney knew and Disney is a big giant corporation. And so, you know, sometimes things like that do slip through the cracks, but I do find it hard to believe that they were completely unaware of these tweets only until now and so it makes me question why they hired him to begin with but nevertheless now that it is out there now that we've seen it i again support disney's actions and hope that they don't actually uh, rehire him but i'd love to hear your thoughts what do you think do you think he was unjustly fired do you want to see him return to the guardians of the galaxy let me know in the comment section below and that's where i'm going to leave today's video um again uh, i'd love to hear your thoughts on everything we talked about uh, if you're so inclined please like this video and if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Also, I want to let you guys know that over the course of this week and next week, I am going to be fairly light on videos. At most, I'll probably get three videos up this week and three videos up next week. Part of it is I'm just trying to take a little bit of a break after Comic-Con. I've been going pretty straight with videos daily, and so I'm just kind of taking a little bit of a break. So again, I just wanted to give you guys a heads up that the videos over the next week and a half are going to be on the light side. But like I said, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please hit that button down below. You should also hit that bell notification so that when I do upload new videos, you are alerted to that. And of course, you can follow me on my Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter accounts. I have links to all those in the video description as well. And until next time, guys, I will catch you later. <laughs>